Cubs 3, Yankees 0, at last, for both the team and James and Tyon. A great pitching performance by Tyon led the Cubs to their first ever win in the Bronx. You did not predict this. No one did. The Cubs went into this series having never won a game in Yankee Stadium, old or new, 0-12 combined between World Series games and regular season games, a streak dating back more than 90 years. Before Friday, Jameson Tyon had been just about the worst starter in Major League Baseball this season, and discussions, here at least, had been about perhaps another eel stint or a move to the bullpen. Well, instead of that, the Cubs had Tyon's best start of the year, and one of the best by any Cub, 8-1 hit innings, and the Cubs ended that long streak of Bronx futility with a well-played 3-0 win. Tyon allowed a one-out single in the first inning, then set down 13 in a row until a two-out walk in the fifth. After that, five more in a row before a one-out walk in the seventh, which was erased on a double play. No Yankees batter got past first base the entire game. I'm going to pause here to let you take that in. It was one of the best pitching performances by a Cub this year and if they keep getting this from Tyon, with the other starters still throwing well, well then, perhaps a second half run can happen. One run would obviously have been enough to win this game, but the Cubs scored three. Here's how those runs cross the plate. It's the second home run in as many days for Bellinger, who hadn't hit one since April 30th, before Thursdays in Milwaukee. He also now has a career-high 13-game hitting streak, which matches Christopher Morel for the longest by any Cub this year. The Cubs added a run in the fifth. Trey Mancini and Miguel Amaya walked, sandwiched around a pop-up. Patrick Wisdom forced Mancini, with Amaya taking third. That was more than the Cubs needed, and they got offense from several different players and absolute dominance from Tyon, who reduced his ERA by more than three-quarters of a run, from 6.93 to 6.15, with this outstanding outing. It's still too high, obviously, but if Tyon can keep up this level of performance, or even anything close to it, good things will happen for this team in the second half. Tyon threw 102 pitches, 64 strikes, and so Albert Alzole entered to throw the ninth inning. He allowed a lead-off single to Franchi Cordero, but almost immediately got Anthony Volt to hit into a double play. This was one of the most satisfying wins of the entire 2023 season, a game that seemed a pitching mismatch between a struggling Tyon and a pitcher, Carlos Rodden, who had dominated the Cubs several times in the past. But the Cubs made easy work of Rodden and Tyon was magnificent. From BCB's John 53, Tyon made his 158th career start Friday night. It was just the eighth in which he departed after allowing no runs through seven or more innings, including a complete game one hitter for the Pirates at home against the Reds on April 8, 2018. He had two more such seven or more, no run starts that year. Until Friday, he had had only one since, eight innings with two hits, no walks and five strikeouts for the Yankees at Tampa Bay on May 27 of last year. That one from last year was similar to this one. Here's to many more. Another fun fact about Tyon's outing. Saturday's pitching matchup doesn't look favorable for the Cubs but after this one, who knows? Drew Smiley takes the mound for the Cubs and Garrett Cole will start for the Yankees. Game time Saturday is early, 12.05 p.m. CT, and TV coverage will be via Marquee Sports Network, an MLB network outside the Cubs and Yankees market territories.